You're listening to Policy Currents, a weekly podcast from the RAND Corporation. I'm Evan Banks. And I'm Deanna Lee. Every Friday, we bring you new insights from RAND's latest research and commentary. It's September 10th. Vaccine hesitancy remains a serious obstacle to ending the pandemic for good. As the Delta variant continues to spread, daily U.S. COVID-19 deaths have reached about 1,500, nearly all among unvaccinated people. Just last night, President Biden addressed the nation, calling America's ongoing crisis a, quote, pandemic of the unvaccinated, and announcing his administration's plan to ensure more Americans get the shot. A new study out this week, authored by experts at RAND and the University of Michigan Acute Care Research Unit, addresses this very same issue, identifying ways to help increase vaccine acceptance in America. The report highlights three key areas of need. First, boosting confidence in vaccine safety and effectiveness. Second, addressing complacency about the pandemic. And third, increasing the convenience of receiving the shot. Importantly, the authors also emphasize that combating misinformation about the vaccine is key to achieving these goals. You can find the full report, which provides recommendations for public health officials, healthcare providers, policymakers, and researchers at RAND.org. More than 100,000 civilians were evacuated from Afghanistan following the Taliban's takeover. This represents just a sliver of the millions of Afghans who have lost their homes and livelihoods to the war. And RAND experts say that hundreds of thousands more people could flee, ending up in squalid camps for decades. This is particularly troubling because our research has found that only one-third of refugees return home after 10 years of being displaced. So what might it take to stave off an even bigger humanitarian disaster in Afghanistan? Well, the best solution is to prevent people from being displaced in the first place. This may come down to whether the Taliban delivers on its promise to bring stability and economic development to the Afghan people. But the international community will also need to play a major role, not only by holding the Taliban accountable to humanitarian norms, but also by incentivizing host countries to create economic opportunities that allow refugees to earn a livelihood. RAND research has shown that the ability to earn a living may be one of the most effective ways to improve refugees' self-reliance and living standards. Black Americans are disproportionately affected by air and water pollution and are more likely to live near facilities that produce hazardous waste. These disparities have been shaped by past discriminatory policies such as redlining. RAND researchers Jamie Madrigano and Benjamin Preston are working on a new project to better understand how to address this issue. They're creating an interactive map of the U.S. to motivate environmental policy that advances anti-racism. As part of an ongoing series of conversations highlighting RAND research on racial equity policy, Madrigano and Preston discussed their project with RAND President and CEO Michael Rich. Both researchers were drawn to this new study based on patterns they've seen in their previous research. Madrigano has studied the health effects of pollution and climate-related hazards, like heat, for a long time. Consistently, her analyses have revealed that certain populations, in particular low-income populations and racial minorities, especially Black Americans, are disproportionately impacted by environmental hazards. Preston, who studies climate change and how people's vulnerability to the effects of climate change shifts over time, was interested in learning more about why people end up being vulnerable in the first place. I thought this project could be a really elegant way of demonstrating that the decisions people made and the attitudes that people had a long time ago, decades into the past, still shape people's lives today, said Preston. It's about decisions and choices that people in power make on the ground that affect people's lives. Republicans who buy individual health care plans were less likely than Democrats to shop for policies using the Affordable Care Act marketplaces, thus missing out on government subsidies. That's according to a new RAND study. 
Without taking advantage of these subsidies, Republicans were foregoing an average of about $800 annually compared with similar Democrats. These results suggest that political polarization may be a factor in determining who makes full use of federal programs designed to make health care coverage more affordable for Americans. One potential way to close this gap is to make subsidies available to eligible Americans who purchase plans outside of the ACA marketplaces. Additionally, political polarization could present a challenge for those who develop marketing and education programs related to the health insurance exchanges. Lead author of the study, Joaquim Hero, suggests avoiding labels and language in these campaigns that would bring to mind any contentious political battles about health care. Violent extremism, especially violent white extremism, is seen as one of the greatest domestic threats facing the U.S. To better understand this problem, RAND researchers interviewed former extremists and their loved ones. We've covered this groundbreaking research previously on the podcast, so here's a brief rundown of what the discussions revealed. Most of the former extremists interviewed said that they came to extremism by way of social media, books, and other propaganda. Some had been recruited, but many others had radicalized on their own and then went looking for groups to join. More than half of those interviewed showed signs of mental health problems such as anger or anxiety, but the line from there to extremism was not direct. Instead, Mental health problems had often cut them off from other opportunities, such as jobs or military service, fueling a sense of isolation or marginalization. Most of the interviewees had stories of family or friends, or sometimes the criminal justice system, trying to bend them away from the path they were on. These confrontational interventions didn't just fail, often they drove the extremists deeper into the movement. But what did work for more than half of the interviewees, was an encounter with someone they had been taught to hate, who showed them kindness they did not deserve. Ultimately, the authors concluded that America's response to violent extremism should take a page from public health. It should look for patterns in who is susceptible to radicalization, what risk factors they share, and what help they need. It should focus money and resources on preventing extremism long-term, as if extremism were a virus or an addiction, rather than responding to it once it becomes a crisis. RAND is a nonprofit institution that helps improve policy and decision making through research and analysis. For more on what we covered this week, check the show notes at rand.org/podcast. We'll see you next week. <laughs>